I'm Mark Silver. I'm a photographer and an author in Carmel, California. I'm so stoked to bring our guest, Scott Kelby, and he's someone that we should all bow down to and give thanks every time we open Photoshop or Lightroom, because frankly, I don't know where I'd be without his books teaching me how to use those tools. Can we take a look at some of your Lightroom tips, tricks? Yes. Things? Yes, you may. Okay. So uh, the trick I want to show you in Lightroom is this. If you're in Lightroom's uh, develop module, which is, I mean, excuse me, the uh, library module where we sort our images and stuff, yeah. right? Over here, you have a metadata panel on the right, and it tells you all kinds of stuff about your camera. It tells you where it was taken and uh, the, 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 the exposure and the focal length and your yeah. ISO and all this stuff, right? Well, at the very bottom, if you have GPS installed in your camera, right, uh -huh. your camera has GPS, there will be the actual GPS data. And does this look funky? You can see this okay, right? There we go. Yep. There yeah. it is. So there's the GPS data. But that's not the interesting thing. I mean, you expect that if your camera has GPS, yeah. somewhere is going to be the GPS thing. That's not the interesting thing, Mark. The interesting thing is right over here. Oh, I know what button. you're going to show. Yes. That little area, arrow. So if you click that arrow, what it does is it takes you over to the map module and shows okay. you the exact place you were standing when you took the shot. So amazing? anytime you have GPS, Lightroom automatically puts that on the world map. But, but if, for example, there's a search up here and you go to Paris and it'll take you to Paris and you, you can zoom in, you know, via satellite. Yeah. And then that little dot will show you where Paris is. And there, if there's photos that you've taken there, they would be there. Right. Now, I've been to Paris. I did a workshop and I've taken pictures. They're not on here. You know why? You didn't have GPS then, right? I didn't have GPS in that camera. So this is what the trick yeah. is leading to, Mark. For example, here I am shooting a football game. We have all these shots. So here's my trick. None of these shots have GPS data. If you look in the GPS field, of course, there's they're blank because yeah. my Canon 1DX does not have built-in GPS. Before you leave, wherever you are, like I'm leaving, it's the end of the day, just take a picture with your iPhone. Your iPhone's got GPS. Ooh. So here's my, my buddy Rob. He works for the Falcons. And if you notice, this is an iPhone. These are just iPhone photos, right? Okay. Just like sideline snapshot stuff. But if you look over here, it has GPS data, right? Yeah. So let's go to the map. And there is uh, Tampa Stadium. It's called Raymond James Stadium. We, they paid for the sponsorship, so let's give them some love. All right. right. And it shows the number two. So there are two shots taken there that have that GPS data. Here's the trick. Now that you do have a photo that's on the map, you can select all the other photos, drag and drop them to that little spot. Unbelievable. And and now they will all have the GPS data embedded into them. And if you want to see your photos, you can click on it and you can just toggle. These are the photos that were taken at that location. Now they all do have GPS data embedded into the photo. Boom. I am loving that. That's a tip. Half the battle is having your stuff organized. I was almost going to use another S word. But if you don't have your images... <laughs> I talk to people and they don't, they have a messy image library and they, it, you can't access your stuff that way. And this is just a whole new way of accessing. Well, we got another image here. All right. And so, wow. Uh, well, there's a number of issues here, Mark. <laughs> First is our white balance is trash, right? It's my own fault, but my white balance is, is really messy. It's, it's, that's easy to fix, right? There is, you can move the sliders, right? Yeah. It looks, it's very blue, like her skin's bluish, yeah. her hair's bluish. The background that I shot her on, which is gray, by the way, <laughs> is bluish. So, okay. I mean, you could mess with this stuff. But here's what, I want to give you a mini tip, and then we're going to move on to a bigger tip. An easy way to, you know, to, to get your white balance correct is to use the white balance eyedropper tool. That's what I use. My main tool for correcting color is this eyedropper. You just click it around your photo, and it, Sets the white balance, and I'm looking for something that's kind of neutral. If you were to make the left side panels in Lightroom open, at the top you see the navigator. So it's a small picture of her, You're and right. it gives you a live preview as you mm. move around in that little box of what the white balance would look like if you clicked in that spot. 
So it's a white balance preview. Yeah. So if, if you're, you can just kind of move around and go, well, this looks pretty good right there. Click and your white balance is set. All right. So the tip I was really leading up to, which is really an actual good tip. The other one's kind of, oh, that's nice to know. And it's kind of handy. But this next one is really uh, handy. So if you want to, you're doing retouching and you want to remove a blemish or something, right? So let's yeah. go over her forehead here. And yeah, there's some little blemishes and stuff that maybe you want to get rid of. So there is a spot removal tool. Uh, it is not like the spot removal tool in Photoshop. The one in Photoshop is actually really good. Yeah. <laughs> the one in Lightroom is crap. Uh -huh. And I don't know why it's so bad, but it is. It's really, really bad. So okay. if you were to, to, to click on it and it chooses what it thinks is an appropriate place That's right. to, to get rid of that. It, it chooses what it thinks is the appropriate spot. So you have the first circle, which is over where the blemish was. Yep. And then the second circle for some reason, it shows the top of her her eyebrow. I don't think that would be a good choice. No. Nope. Uh, you can click and move it. You can say no, no Lightroom, bad job. Maybe something yeah. there. So at least the skin's going in the right direction. Yeah. Right, because the skin on your eyelids, right? So the skin on your eyelids is going horizontally, but the skin right there on the bridge of your nose is going vertically. Interesting. But it chose to sample from the wrong skin, which is typical of this crappy tool. Ooh. But I have a, I have help and hope. Show me. I am ignorant. Is this is weird? You'll go in here and you'll get rid of some stuff, and you're like, "Oh, that looks okay," and that looks okay, and and you'll you'll wind up, you know, getting rid of a lot of stuff, and it works okay. Yeah. But then all of a sudden, what it'll do is it'll literally sample and and throw her teeth. I'm <laughs> it not. It goes joking. crazy. It, Why is that? It, it does <laughs> it all the time. So Lightroom picks the spot and. 25 or maybe 20% of the time it will pick the wrong spot. Okay. Here's what you do. You just hit the, uh, the, excuse me, the slash key on your keyboard. Yeah. So you click and it chooses a spot and you go, no, I don't like that. If you choose slash, it'll try other spots. I never knew that Scott. I just do it manually. I had no idea there was a way to. Yeah. Just you hit just slash a couple of times. It'll move to other areas and it actually does a reasonable job. Well, why don't we pick up a couple of questions if anybody's got a question out there? Well, here's a question. How do you properly manage Lightroom catalogs? Uh, the, the real secret to happiness in, in Lightroom is, is literally for, for Lightroom Classic users is just to have one catalog. Yeah. You, there shouldn't be any managing I catalogs. Agree. You, you have one catalog. Even Adobe will tell you just use one catalog. So the secret is Pick whatever your best catalog is, whatever your catalog that you have that you love is, and put take all your other catalogs and put it into that one catalog. Here's how you do that. So in Lightroom, you go under the file menu and you go choose right here, import from another right. catalog, right? Go and then just go on your drive and go find wherever that there you keep your catalogs, Click on it and it's it'll say LR cat at the end. That's how you know. Yep. Hit choose and it will it will bring that catalog into your main catalog. And bingo, so go choose whichever catalog you have. You probably have one that you like. Like this is my main one, but then I have six others. Bring them all together and then your management problems go away. Here's another one from Ron. Is there any routine maintenance I should do with my catalog? Occasionally compact. Oh, like, like he says, occasionally compacting my Outlook mailbox. Is there anything like that for the Lightroom database? You can optimize your database, but it, it really, it doesn't really make it smaller. Well, I guess it does because it throws away junk that's unnecessary, but it does make it do run that? faster. Yeah, right there. Optimize catalog right at the top under file menu. Okay. And it does. It'll, if you haven't optimized your drive in six months or a year, I and better it, do that. It, anytime it feels a little sluggish. Go hit optimize catalog and it'll, it'll, it'll even tell you, it'll bring up, if your catalog is large, has been running slowly, optimize may improve in performance. It's going to take several minutes. And while it's doing it, you can't be playing around in Lightroom. That uh, also, if, you're, if your catalog gets that. really big, one of the reasons might be that you're storing a lot of high resolution previews in there. So go under your, like, you know how you bring in images, it draws thumbnails? Well, if it draws the full-size one-to-one thumbnail, they're, they're large because it's under okay. catalog settings. So you can have it do one day, one a week, after 30 days, or never. You know, you can set it to, like, a week. If you haven't yeah. gone back to a collection in a week, you might have to redraw your previews. It'll do it really quick. Who cares? But that will keep your, your preview. Also, you can choose your different preview sizes. Like, if you keep really large ones... 
your file, your catalog is going to be larger. I've over explained that answer. Let's move on. That's Sorry. good. Well, well, listen. He asked an easy question. I just bombarded him. Thanks again, Scott. <laughs> Thanks, Take buddy. Care. Thanks to all your, your viewers. Appreciate the opportunity. Awesome. I need you to tell your friends about this show. Let your fingers do the walking. Share with your friends the video. Leave your comments and likes. And remember to get out and capture your own images of life.